I mean, I just I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, they have filed a motion about the live streaming of the career of the witnesses. Do you guys have an objection to that? Yes, sir. You do? Yes, Your Honor. Um, well, let's go on the record then. When I came in this morning, there was a motion or request filed by the state to limit media coverage that they didn't show video but only had audio because of danger to them possibly out in the community or in prison or jail. So what's your objection? Um, the objection, Judge, would just be late filing and that Ms. Hilton is not the only person who is alleged to have, um, I guess, made statements against Ms. Rude while incarcerated and the other two are, are not included on that motion. Um, it's just It's just the one. The way I was reading it, is they were referring to all three of them even though they only mentioned her by name. Well, yes, Judge. I, I will say we did, it, the request is specifically for Ms. Hilton, uh, but uh, I, I would amend the request to the other two jailhouse snitches. Uh, I do believe they, they have the same circumstances and the same dangers associated with that. There's, as the court knows, there's no constitutional right to a camera in the courtroom. Uh, there's no prejudice to the defendant. It's still an open uh, proceeding. Uh, there's still the right to confrontation. And uh, uh, it's really the court's discretion. It's not anything that the defendant has a right to or doesn't have a right to. Uh, so I would request that the court issue an order limiting their uh, cover, the media's coverage of those three witnesses only to audio only. Your Honor, again, it, it was it was late filed. Um, we've all been aware that this would have uh, media coverage would be live streamed, and it wasn't until um, late yesterday evening um, that this thing was filed. I don't know why now it's it's such a concern. Okay. I mean, in response to that, Judge, our, our witnesses expressed their concern yesterday to our investigators. So they did not express, and quite frankly, they didn't know it was going to be live streamed until they found out it's, you know, through news media that's been the live stream. So. But their attorney, the, the state. They, I'm not their attorney. You represent the state, I and you're calling okay, them as okay. witnesses. I'm, I'm going to order that the media only do the audio and not video when those three witnesses testified that were in custody. Um, Thank you. We've done this a long time, and we all know that anybody who comes out of jail to testify against somebody doesn't want the rest of the population to know they're snitched. Now, you may say, well, that's just part of what they have to do, but we've all in this room done things to make sure that somebody who wasn't in danger try to have them testify. Anything else you want to say about it, Ms. Wilbur, or Ms. Hewitt? I would just note, Judge, that um, none of those witnesses are currently in custody. Yeah, but nobody that I know of has ever said they wanted a snitch jacket with, with priors. That, and so I don't see how it harms your defense that the audio is going out but not the video. So, okay. I mean, and I'm certainly not requesting that all media coverage be shut down, just the video. I don't want them on camera. They don't want to be on camera. So, okay. Anything else? Will you notify me somehow? Oh, yeah, you'll know who okay. they are. <laughs> all right, all right. And, and well, actually, I, I'll let Mr. Brown tell you when he calls her name, he can walk over and say, this is one of them you have to turn off the video. On. Yes, it'll be our last three witnesses, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, so ma'am, I think we're ready for you to take the stand again. Okay. Thank you. 
Good morning to me. I think where we left off yesterday, we were discussing um, discussing some hospitalizations that Savannah had, um, I guess, had gone undergone. Is that correct? Is that your recollection? Yes. Okay. And one of those hospitalizations that we discussed happened in May of 2015, correct? That's correct. Okay. I'm going to shift around these records. And do you recall which facility Savannah was hospitalized in in 2015? I spent some time last night like, trying to pull that out of my memories. I honestly don't know which hospitalization was which. I know that it happened. She was in the hospital twice. I know the last time it was in the May first part of June of 2016. The first time I have in my head was about 13 or so months before that. Okay. Those are the two that I know what I can answer on. Okay. If I advised you that one of the hospitalizations was in a facility called Prairie Care, would that do you recall the date that she would have been treated at Prairie Care? Approximately, although I didn't view prairie care as being hospitalization, but I viewed it as being more additional health or therapy. Okay. And do you, was that in 2015, or do can you recall that? I honestly don't know. Your Honor, may I um, approach and retrieve Exhibit F? Exhibit F? Yes. Which should be, I believe, some records, by a stack of them. So when Savannah was treated at at Prairie Care, did you have input? Did you talk to caregivers at, at Prairie Care? Yes. And did you tell them that that she had um, she had talked about committing suicide? She spent overnight in the emergency room in May of 2015, correct? The exact dates I'm not 100% sure of, but I know the dates I told you. And the admit date was May 27th of 2015? I don't know. And the discharge date was June of 17th of 2015? I don't know. While Savannah was treated, did you have contact with any of the treatment givers, treatment providers? I would have, yes. And during that time, did they communicate to you 
that Savannah, when in group therapy, had made a threat to a participant, another peer in that therapy. Your Honor, I'm going to object hearsay. Your Honor, this is a hostile witness who is denying that that she remembers anything about the hospitalization. I am reading directly from the exhibit that has been admitted. But do you, uh, somehow you think she knows that that was done? I can present this to her and, and have what, her look at it. That's what I, was, I didn't hear in the question. Do you know or you're reading from a record, but that doesn't mean that she knows it. <coughs> the record's already been admitted. I can, I can approach her and okay. ask her if she recalls this conversation. Okay. May I approach the witness? All right, Tamil, now I'm going to show you a page out of Defendant's Exhibit F. And it is a document that has Prairie Care and Prairie Care Medical Group at the top and is labeled Progress Notes. Is that correct? That's correct. Today. And here at the top, it says patient name Savannah or Lecky Savannah, correct? Yes. And date of birth 6 3 2001. Yes. And based on that information, is that, you know who Savannah was, correct? Yes. And is that Savannah's date of birth? Yes. And it says admit date May 27th, 2015, correct? Yes. And discharge date June 17th, 2015, correct? Yes. Do you have any reason to disagree with that? I have not seen these records before. I don't know. But you were aware Savannah was hospitalized in or was under treatment in prayer here, correct? Yes, at one point she was. Okay, and you say you don't remember the exact dates. Correct. But it was in 2015. I don't know. And I think yesterday you testified that she was hospitalized inpatient in June of 2016, correct? End of May 1st, part of June, yes. And you said that the other one had happened 13 months prior, correct? Correct. So would May of 2015 be 13 months prior to June of 2016? Yes, approximately. Okay. Yes. And here it says that there was a note addressed to a male peer written and signed by a patient, correct? That's what I'm saying, yes. And down here in this paragraph, um, it says, as there is a concern for safety, and this was not brought to my attention until patient was gone from programming, I did contact mom, correct? Yes. And then in parentheses, it says the word Tamil, correct? Correct. And your name is Tamil. That's correct. And it has a phone number. Yes. Was that your phone number at that time? Yes. Via phone to inform of incident. Mom was very supportive and concerned that Savannah would do something like this. Mom indicated she would talk with Savannah about the seriousness of making threats to others, correct? That's what it says. And yes. you were told that the threat was that she had a, a, made a note to appear, correct? I did not see anything in the note that says anything about one to commit suicide. That wasn't my question. The threat was communicated, correct, to you? It was communicated. And the threat was to appear, correct? That's correct. And the threat was, you started this war, only you can stop this war. There will be blood. I have spent the majority of my childhood studying pain, correct? Yes. And that concerned you? Yes. Okay. I'm also going to show you another page here in Defendant's Exhibit F. And again, here at the top, that says Prairie Care, Prairie Care Medical Group, correct? Correct. And on this, the assessment date says February 5th of 2016, correct? Yes. And was, uh, or, excuse me, and patient name Savannah Lecky, correct? Correct. Date of birth 6 3 2001? Correct. Based on that information, does that seem like these records would belong to Savannah? It appears. And you testified yesterday that you are the person who brings Savannah to medical appointments, correct? Yes. And you were present then at this assessment. Was 
was this and that this and this year. It says diagnosis information at the top, correct? Yes. And then it says type, admission, correct? Yes, thank you. Appears that that's what that is, yes. And in the middle of the page it says presenting problems, correct? Yes. And it also says family present when starting as a question, correct? Yes. And it says yes. Yes. Were you family? Yes. Would that mean you were present? It appears so, yes. And in this, you reported that over the last month we've been watching a very rapid decline in her ability to deal with the stress of her stepfather moving out. There's been a lot of writings discovered, very writings that talk about suicide and cutting and an alternate reality that she has gone into to try and deal with her stressors. Correct? Yeah, very and dark writings. Yes. Okay. And you also stated then that she's seeking out other people in her same situation with the cutting and suicide and different things, correct? Yes. And you also reported that as a parent group, we feel like she's beyond where we feel comfortable. We have seen such a rapid decrease in her ability to deal with stress that I'm worried she's going to try and commit suicide. Is that what you said? Yes. And also you stated that Savannah liked to write to get her emotions out, correct? Correct. February of 2016, Savannah was taking medications, correct? Uh, probably for ADHD, correct, yes. Okay, and you would have reported that or confirmed that at this time? Correct, yes. And you, in fact, confirmed that she was taking Stratera? Yes. And that she was taking it as prescribed? Yes. And also Concerta? And that she was taking it as prescribed? Yes. And a past psychiatric medication was Ritalin, correct? Yes. And she was not taking it at that time? Correct. I'm going to show you um, more records that are here contained within Defendant's Exhibit F. And this at the top says Prairie Care, correct? Yes. And under Client, it says Lecky Savannah, correct? Correct. And admission date 5-27-2015, correct? Correct. And it's also titled Medication Reconciliation Information, correct? Yes. And the medications there are Concerta? Yes. And the reason was for ADHD? Yes. And Stratera is also on that list. Yes. And that was for ADHD. Yes. And then also vitamin D. Yes. And that was because she had a vitamin D deficiency. Correct. And she also was prescribed Wilbutrin XL at that time. Yes. And the reason was for depression. Yes. And I'm going to show you here um, what's titled at the top, Psychiatric Discharge Summary. And it also has prairie care at the top, correct? Correct. And it has patient name, Lucky Savannah, correct? Yes. Date of birth, 6-3-2001? Yes. And is that who you would know to be Savannah? Yes. And admission date was May 27, 2015, correct? Yes. And discharge date was June 17, 2015, correct? Correct. All right. And under diagnosis information, what is the type says admission, correct? Correct. And the diagnosis was major depressive order, single episode, unspecified, correct? Correct. And then also unspecified depressive disorder, correct? Correct. And then also attention deficit hyperactivity disorder combined type, correct? Yes. And then it also says underneath there, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder combined presentation, correct? Yes. 
And another diagnosis was autistic disorder, correct? Yes. And then under that, autism spectrum disorder, correct? Yes. And she was also diagnosed at this time with oppositional defiant disorder, correct? Correct. And it's also repeated there underneath as oppositional defiant disorder. Correct. Okay. And you were present whenever you took Savannah yes. to this? Okay. And so you were present then at the admission? Yes. And that's because Savannah was a minor? Correct. And you were aware of the reason that she was that she was taken to prairie care at that time, correct? Correct. Yes, I do remember this. Yes. And was the reason because she disclosed to a teacher that she was either going to suffocate herself or hang herself? I remember it being more of doing research on dark thoughts, and I don't remember that exactly, but. And so this record states that a soon to be 14 year old eighth grader referred the PHP from an overnight stay in the ER following her disclosing to her teacher that she was going to suffocate, suffocate herself or hang herself. Is that what this record states? It does. Okay. And were you present whenever the, whenever this information was being communicated? I don't remember that. But yes, I was present. I do not remember that. time whenever Savannah was um, admitted for mental health issues, correct? And she was initially taken to an emergency room, is that correct? Yes. And that was Mercy Hospital? Remember it. I approach the witness again. Okay. Thank you. Tamil, I will show you what was admitted yesterday as Defendant's Exhibit E. And at the top of this page, it says 6 7 2016 ED in Mercy Hospital, correct? Yes. And Here at the bottom of that page, um, it, it says Alina Health Mercy Hospital, correct? Yes. And it says patient Lucky Savannah, correct? Correct. And date of birth 6 3 2001? Correct. Is that who you know to be Savannah Lucky? Yes. And your daughter? Yes. And it says admit date was June 7th of 2016, correct? Yes. Okay. And here, um, under at the top of that page, it says reason for visit, right? Yes. Chief complaint, it says that too as well. Correct. And then underneath there, it says suicide gesture. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then visit diagnosis, it says depression, unspecified depression type. Correct. Correct. And again, the medications that she was taking at that time, it says prior to admission was methylphenidate or conservative, correct? correct? And that was for ADHD? Yes. And her discharge medication list was for Stratera, correct? And Concerta, both for ADHD, yes. Okay, so Stratera and Concerta both for ADHD, correct? Correct. And none of those medications were stopped in the visit, correct? Correct.
and you communicated with healthcare providers at the emergency room about Savannah, correct? Yes. And they communicated to you as well? Yes. And you understood why or why she was there, correct? Yes. So, yes. And Under here where it says impression and plan, it says assessment, exacerbation of depression with suicidal ideations resulting in self-mutilating behavior in the form of self-inflicted abrasions to her left forearm, correct? That's correct. And then the plan was that I agreed with A and R that she warrants admission to the hospital for further psychiatric evaluation and treatment, correct? Yes. And did that in fact happen? Yes. And she went to, was it Abbott Northwest Hospital for that? That's correct, yes. And yesterday, I believe you testified that there was a point at which Savannah had disclosed in a counseling appointment um, that she had uh, been self-mutilating, correct? Yes. And as a result, um, emergency medical services was contacted, correct? Correct. And Savannah was transported to the emergency room yes. by, by ambulance? That's correct. Okay. report two, um, there's a paragraph titled collateral information, correct? Yes. And there it says spoke with patient's mom to meal, correct? Correct. And there's a phone number there, correct? Correct. Was that your phone number at the time? Yes. And did you in fact speak with someone from the hospital at that time? Yes. And you gave information to that person? Okay. Yes. And you stated that Oh, patient's mom states that patient's counselor and school counselor both felt patient was at risk of suicide today, correct? Yes. And mom states that patient has been has been decompensating over the past month, correct? Yes. And that she's been getting more upset more often, cutting more and having daily thoughts of suicide, correct? Yes. And that today patient did say she was going to slit her wrist and she had been looking on the internet how to do it, correct? Yes. Patient told her mom that if she did not do it today, she would do it before the summer was over, also correct? Yes. Mom states that patient has been more depressed over the past two years, correct? Yes. And the patient did attempt suicide one year ago by hanging due to school service, correct? Yes. Patient is in a different school this year, so school has been better for her this year, also correct? Yes. Mom feels that patient is not able to return home at this time, correct? Yes. She feels that patient is emotionally not functioning, correct? Yes. Mom states, I will have a dead child if she goes home today, correct? <laughs> Mom also states that patient did snap last week and ended up kicking, biting, and punching her, correct? Yes. Mom states, I worry about the safety of my children when she is so out of control, emotionally unstable, correct? Yes. Approach and return to Vince Exhibit B and F.
And Tamil, just to clarify, the questions I just asked you um, regarding the medical records, those were related to the emergency room visit, is that correct? Yes. And from the emergency room, um, Savannah then went into inpatient treatment? Yes. And that was at Abbott Northwestern Hospital? That's correct. Okay. as Defendant's Exhibit H. Also advised um, the care providers that you had le joint legal custody with David Lincoln, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And Savannah was admitted to inpatient psychiatry unit, correct? Yes. And was she also was she taking the medication and vilified? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Um, and the Abilify was discontinued? Yes. That's what that says. Okay. And she was started on another medication, correct? I don't see where it's there. Yes. Okay. And that medication was Risperdal? Yes. Do you know what the Abilify or the Risperdal was prescribed for? I probably don't think that was right. Page of defendant's exhibit H. This again, this relates to Savannah Lucky, correct? <coughs> you can see that because it says patient Savannah Lucky at the bottom. Yes. Date of birth 6 3 2001. Yes. All right. 
and you were present whenever Savannah was admitted? Yes. Had you and Savannah had some conflict around this time? This was six, uh, this was six, eight of 2016. Yes. And what was that conflict? I remember it being, she was very angry with me for the potential of moving out of the STMA area. And can you explain what STMA is? St. Michael Albertville High School in our, our community. And the move was because you were going to move in with Carrie Steves? That's correct. Okay. She's also very um, a recent situation she had with her father and mother that was still overflowing into this. Too. So. And you spoke with the treatment providers, correct? Yes. At Abbott Northwestern? Is that correct? Yes. And you told them, I'll read this, her mom states she cannot understand any of her daughter's thoughts around wanting to cut herself or kill herself, correct? Yes. And she states that she's not sure she can manage this and thinks her daughter needs to be in a place for a long time where she can get help, correct? That's correct. And you were told then um, that hospitalization is a short-term stabilization, correct? Yes. And that Savannah would not be in the facility um, she says for, for an eating, I think that's probably a typo, a significant length of time, correct? I'm not sure. And under here it says diagnosis, correct? Yes. And those diagnoses are autistic spectrum disorder? Yes. ADHD? Yes. Generalized anxiety disorder? Yes. Unspecified depressive disorder, correct? Yes. Savannah have a comfort item? Yes. What was that comfort item? Her bear bear. And what was bear bear? What type of object? It was a flat sort of blanket bear that I made for her when she was an infant. It was bears on the top of hands and it was silky. as important as she got older, but yeah, it was something that was she got over the time. Did Bear Bear accompany her to uh, to Adam one? I don't know. Do you recall if she asked you for it? I didn't. And on June 10th of 2016, you were in Las Vegas? And that's when you and Carrie Steves were engaged? That's right. Okay, and here this says date of service, correct? Yes. And that's 6 2016 That's correct. Right. And Savannah was hospitalized at that time? Yes.
you just have it. Okay. Yeah. No objection. Admitted. Would you like to take a break? Actually, like water. Just water. Yeah, testified yesterday that Savannah did see a counselor, correct? Yes. And I believe you stated that the counselor's name was John? Correct. And Solution or Solutions Counseling was the name of the business? That's correct. All right. And I believe you also testified yesterday that you typically accompanied her to those visits, correct? Yes. And some of those visits included you and Savannah together, correct? That's correct. And some were just Savannah by herself? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you a page here in Defendant's Exhibit I. And here at the top, it says Solutions Counseling Services, correct? Yes. And diagnos Diagnostic Assessment? Correct. And the name at the top says Savannah F. Lecky, correct? Correct. Date of birth 6 3 2001. Correct. Is that the same information um, that you would know to be your daughter, Savannah Lecky? Yes. Okay. And was the counselor that you saw, John C. Torkelson? Yes, that's correct. And for the court reporter, Torkelson is T O R K E L S O N. And there was an assessment done, correct? Yes, that's correct. And that assessment date was 7 3 2015? Yes. And were you present? Yes. And you gave input at yes. that time, correct? Yes. And in that, you says Savannah's mother reports that she was adopted as a baby from a family friend and that Savannah knows her biological mother well, correct? That's correct. And she reports that Savannah sees her biological mother regularly, correct? Yes. And also stated that Savannah's mother reports that her issues began about three years ago, just after her mother and father divorced, correct? Yes. And yesterday, I believe your testimony was that the divorce, the separation happened in 2010, correct? Yes. And I believe the divorce you testified was in 2012? I believe so. Okay. And at that point, how old was Savannah? If I said from 2012 to 2001, she should be roughly 11 years old, would that be correct? That would be correct. Okay. And you reported that Savannah began to exhibit oppositional behaviors that were consistently getting worse, correct? Correct. That she would talk back, interrupt, and refuse to obey adult commands, correct? Yes. And that Savannah's relationship with her stepfather began to break down with increased behaviors and her relationship with him continues to be broken, correct? Correct. Um, and that Savannah's mother reports that at the end of May, and that would be May 2015, correct? Correct. She had developed a suicide plan, which her paraprofessional at school found. Is that correct? <coughs> yes. And that Savannah had been looking up songs about death as well, correct? Yes. And that Savannah was sent to Prairie Care for about a month and finished up the last Wednesday in June, correct? Correct. And that Savannah's mother, you, reported that she's doing well with behaviors following her stay at Prairie Care, correct? correct. Yes. And again, as we um, looked over earlier, she came home on medications after Prairie Care, correct? correct? Correct, yes. And she has been diagnosed with Asperger's, ADHD, ODD, and there was some talk about borderline personality disorder or bipolar disorder, according to her mother's report, correct? Uh, correct, yes. Okay.
And here, um, in Defendant's Exhibit I, there's at the bottom of this page where it says page number two of four, and it still has Savannah's name at the bottom, correct? Yes. And there it says risk assessment, correct? Yes. And uh, it talks about, um, at this time, suicide, correct? Yes. It says risk is slight. Yes. And it notes that Savannah had suicidal ideation with the plan in May 2015, but denies current suicidal ideation, correct? correct. Yes. And violence, none, correct? Yes. That Savannah denies any thoughts about killing or hurting anyone else, correct? Yes. And then risk assessment for child abuse, it says slight, correct? Yes. And that Savannah reports that she's been slapped by her stepfather with an open hand, correct? Yes. And this is not a mandated report, correct? Correct. And she reports that her parents would fight and she witnessed her father throw, throw stuff at her mother, correct? Yes. She reports that her stepfather's been emotionally abusive at times towards her, is that also correct? That's what she said, anyway. But that's what she said. Okay. And here, on June 29th, 2016, uh, Savannah was seen at by John Torkelson, correct? Correct. And were you present at that time? Yes. And you participated in the first 35 minutes of the session, correct? Yes. Okay. And under patient presentation, um, the note says, Savannah reports that her anxiety level is higher doing the move-in with her mother's fiance, but her depression is lower after the hospital visit, correct? Yes. Where is it the date here says June 29th of 2016, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the problem address was depression, correct? Correct. And on June 7th of 2016, you were also with Savannah at Mr. Torkelson's office, correct? Yes. And was that the visit that um, precipitated the trip to the emergency room? Yes. Okay. And during that time, a uh, school social worker had reported that Savannah had cut at school, correct? Yes. And that had stated to her that she had a plan to slit her wrists over the summer, correct? Yes. Okay. And at that time, there there was an active suicidal ideation, correct? Yes. And that her counselor determined that she had a plan to slit her wrist sometime in the summer, correct? Yeah, it was not right, but yes. That's what it says. And did a deputy respond at Mr. Torkelson's office? I'm not remembering that. Okay. Do you remember whether Savannah's person was searched prior to going to the ambulance? No. Were you present at that time? Yes. Did you observe everything? Yes. Okay. So this report states that a Wright County Sheriff's deputy presented to his office, correct? <coughs> yes. And then that that deputy asked both Savannah and you questions about Savannah's risk to hurt herself, correct? Yes. And then the deputy searched Savannah, correct? Yes. And a pencil sharpener blade was found on her. Do you yes. recall that? I don't, but yes, that's what it says. Okay. And you'd also seen Mr. Torkelson on May 31st, 2016, correct? Yes. And at that time, um, Mr. Torkelson had received reports um, from Savannah's school that they're concerned about her cutting and having suicidal ideation without a plan at that time, correct? That's correct. And Savannah 
at that time, were you present when Savannah spoke with Mr. Fulkerson? I'm not sure if I was in the room, but I would have taken that to the appointment, yes. And just says Savannah presented a therapy with her mother and participated in the first 15 minutes of the session. Yeah. Do you recall whether you heard this discussion about um, not having a plan at that time? Did Mr. Torkelson discuss a safety plan with you at that time? And at that time, was Savannah blaming you for depression? Yes. was also seen on May 9th of 2016, correct? Yes. And at that time, they the problem that was addressed was depression, correct? Yes. And that there was social withdrawal? Yes. And that she reported higher levels of depressed mood over the past couple of weeks? Yes. And sh her increased depression was due to recent changes, changes in the household, correct? Correct. What were those changes? <laughs> household changes would have been uh, I, I would assume when Carrie Steve's and I came home and Mike Evans and when Mike Evans moved out, um, Reba and Robert Pete helped you move him out, correct? I don't remember that. When did, when did he move out? February. Of what year? 2015, 16. It was February. I remember it was February. I think it was 16. So your answer was you don't remember that? I don't. seen on January 20th, 2016, correct? Yes. And one of the presentations here, Signs and Symptoms, is that Savannah's mother reports that she's been attempting to be positive with her stepfather even though he is leaving, correct? Yes. And so that was in January of 2016. Correct. And stepfather was Mike Evans? Yes. Okay. And you advised in this therapy appointment that your now ex-boyfriend continues to make remarks in front of Savannah about him leaving as a result of her, correct? Yes. That upset Savannah? Yes. Her siblings blamed her too? I don't know what her siblings.
system, I'd move to admit defendant's exhibit I. asking you about your relationship with Reba, there had been a break in the, in your relationship with Reba, correct? Uh, specify the time frame. Um, the time would have been uh, roughly 20, sometime in 2016? <coughs> okay. And the break in the relationship had to do with a Facebook post by Carrie Steves? One of the two things, yes. Okay, so that was one of the things. And the other thing, what was the other thing? Apparently I was too happy. Also, um, Mr. Brown asked you some questions about a power of attorney yesterday, correct? Yes. And I believe your testimony was that you provided Ms. Rude a power of attorney as quickly as you could. <coughs> yes. And Savannah went to Missouri, was it August of 2016? Correct. Um, I will show you what I will mark as Defendant's Exhibit J. And ask you if you recognize this document. Exhibit J. Well, first of all, it it is a it's a document, correct? Yes, that's correct. And it consists of four pages. That's that correct. correct? Yes. Okay. And at the top of page one of that document, it says power of attorney for child, correct? Yes. And it also says that it has. It says no. <coughs> reading this document into the record. She's already set stated that she doesn't recognize the document. Doesn't recognize it. I wasn't going to read the entire document, Your Honor. I'm trying to lay a foundation that that uh, Ms. Ms. Montag's name is on this, and on page two, there appears a signature in front of the notary. At the well, same time, she's already said she doesn't recognize it. I don't know how you're going to lay it. <coughs> I don't know anything about that document. Then I'll back up and ask a couple more okay. questions. Um, although, well, I just asked you if you had provided a power of attorney to Reba, correct? Yes. And you stated you did as quickly as possible. Yes. Okay. And when did you say you provided that? I sent it the first, the one that I remember doing the first was right away, as soon as after Santa left, I sent one to his, her father to okay. sign, to send to Rebecca, finish. The second one was, uh, based on 
uh, Rebecca asking me to send, to send one again. And so there was a second one together. So. Okay. Um, and so again, when I showed you Defendant's Exhibit J, I'll let you just look over the entire thing. I didn't see. recognize this first page at all, so thank you. Yes, you are anyways, this time. Thank okay. you. And what is this document then? It's a power of attorney for my daughter. And, so, yeah. and did you either draft or cause this to be drafted? But you had an opportunity to review it. Yes. Okay. I and you, if I drafted it or furniture drafted it. Okay. okay. Uh, it was presented to you though as a power of attorney. Someone Correct. drafted it to you. Yes. And, and you had an opportunity to ask questions of someone about the document if you had any. Yes. And you understood what the document purported to do. Yes. yes. Okay. And here on page two of that document, uh, is there a signature? Yes. And whose signature is that? Mine. And is there a date? Yes. And what is the date that you signed that? January 10th, 2017. And is there a notary block below here? Yes, it is. And did you sign this in front of the notary? Yes, it is. And that would verify the date? Correct. Okay. And so again, you said that was January 10th of 2017? Yes. And Savannah went to Missouri in August of 2016, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. having some some problems adjusting to Carrie Steves entering the family, correct? No. And again yesterday you testified that you had applied for the Community Alternatives for Disabled Individual, or the KD waiver, correct? Correct. And in the process of that, I believe you also testified that you'd spoken with some social workers and things like that during that time? Correct. Okay. And do you recall whether during those conversations that the social workers or the, whoever you were speaking with expressed some concerns about Savannah's reaction to Carrie Steves. I not remember that. And do you recall whether do you recall whether the Division of Health and Human Services in Wright County, Minnesota became aware of Savannah's hospitalization in 2016? They would have, yes. Okay. And did they contact you or someone from, from the Division of Health and Human Services contact you to get information? Yes. And did you communicate a concern that you felt Savannah was not ready to be discharged from the hospital 
to someone with Division of Health and Human Services. Which year was this? Um, may I approach the witness? Now I'll show you what I've marked for identification purposes as Dependent Exhibit K. And at the top here, it says chronology summary, correct? Correct. Work group, Lucky Savannah. Correct. And it says assessment 611-2016. That's correct. Right. Yes. Okay. And were you familiar with an individual named Lacey Oyer? Yes. And how did you know Lacey? Uh, she was the, uh, I, she's something to do with the right Okay, and you had contact with her regarding Savannah's hospitalization in June of 2016, correct? I believe so. Okay. And I'll ask you, Tamil, just to take a look here um, where it says time note, date created 6-14-2016. If you could just read that to yourself and see if that, um, if that helps your memory in the conversation. says time note date created 615 2016 yes okay I'll just have you read that to yourself Yesterday, do you recall me asking you whether or not there had ever been a report um, that Savannah made against you? Yeah, I did. Okay, after reading this, does that help refresh your recollection? I don't know if it uh, resulted in a CPS or, uh, report that I recognize some of this information, yes. Okay, and Division of Health and Human Services was aware of it? Apparently, yes. Okay. And when you say you remember it, do you remember that Savannah stated that you had left her in charge of her siblings overnight on multiple occasions? Uh, with her aunt present. Is that what is that what Savannah reported here? No. Okay. She says it over here. And that you were just pointing to um, the TW asked Savannah if her mom leaves her home with her siblings when she runs errands. And Savannah stated she does, but it's not very long. Correct. Okay. And then also there's... That Savannah stated that any other time her mom has been gone overnight, yes. her, her aunt comes and stays with them. Right. Okay. Tamil, did you um, request before Savannah was discharged from the hospital in June of 2016 that she be placed in foster care? No. Okay, I'm going to have you review a note here um, that was written by Lacey Oyer, and it looks like date created was 6 15 2016. I didn't use the word foster care. No. You used a different term? I didn't say that. You were concerned about Savannah coming home, correct? Yes. Savannah up from the hospital in June of 2016. I 
sort of what it And I believe yesterday you advised that you felt uh, targeted by Savannah. That's correct. And that was after this June of 2016 issue? Correct. Yes. And did Savannah speak with people from the Division of Health and Human Services regarding her care? I don't know. Did a social worker or anything like that ever meet you in your home to discuss things with, with Savannah? Yes. And what was that social worker's name? Would I'll have you take a look here again at Defense Exhibit K at the bottom where it says time note and date created 6 30 2016. And under the notes, um, it says TW. Does that help ring any bells for whoever the social worker or whoever would have come up to speak with you would be? No. Do you recall that person's name? No. Do the initials TW mean anything to you? Did Lacey Oyer ever go to your home? Yes. Okay. Did you have a conversation with Lacey Oyer about uh, feeling entitled? Uh, I think so. I can't Did you have a conversation with Lacey Oyer? Um, regarding Savannah's feelings um, about Carrie Steves. Did you have any conversation regarding concerns that Savannah had about the quickness of how quick this relationship was moving? I don't know. Savannah had medical care through the state of Minnesota um, prior to her move to Missouri, correct? Yes. And that was through the end of 2016, is that correct? She had medical care through the state of Minnesota? Yes. And that expired then at the beginning of 2017? Correct. And you and David Leckie had joint legal custody correct. of Savannah, correct? Um, at, after, well, at, in January 2017, was Savannah effectively uninsured or as far as medical and dental and vision went? other children insured under the state of Minnesota? Yes. But you don't recall whether Savannah was? No, we ended at the end of December, but she had a power of attorney through Rebecca 
to continue it. Were you still the legal parent of Savannah at the beginning of 2017? Yes. Okay. And you shared joint legal custody? Correct. Stated. Okay. And Rebecca was not, she did not have parental rights at that point. She had power of attorney. But she did not have parental rights at that point. What's the difference? I can't answer that. Okay. That's, I don't understand. Yes, as far as I know is concerned, yes. Reba had not adopted Savannah. Mm -hmm. Okay, she was not she was not a legal mother. Correct. Okay, you were still the legal mother. Correct. And David was still the legal father. Correct. show you what I marked as dependent exhibit J for identification purposes again. And again, you previously identified that as a power of attorney for child, correct? Correct. The second one. And this was uh, signed by you on January 10th of 2017. Correct. And there is a signature block for another person on there, correct? Correct. And that person's David Allen Leffy? Correct. And that would be your ex-husband and Savannah's legal father, correct? correct. And it that that is not signed, correct? Correct. Testified that you weren't sure who picked up Savannah after the hospitalization in 2016? I had assumed it was me. She was picked up from the hospital in June 2016. I'm not sure the chronological order of where she went. I remember she had some time with her aunt, Amanda. I know she went to Camp Tinajuna. And she does also come over. And Savannah did have medications prescribed to her at the end of her hospitalization in 2016. Yes. And she had those medications, she took those medications as far as you know while she was in Minnesota? As far as I know, yes. Did she have those medications with her when she went to camp? I would, I would assume so. I don't know. Did Savannah stay? You said she did stay in your home after the hospitalization? I believe so, yes. Do you recall how many days? Yeah. 
And who picked Savannah up from the camp? I would assume it would be me. And I don't remember that it was just me. But you don't recall which days she was home after the hospitalization? The hospitalization was in June. She left for Missouri. I guess I'm going to assume there would be several days. I don't know how many. Savannah did see um, Mr. Torkelson, the counselor, after her release from hospitalization? I would assume so, yes. And was there a point after she was released from the hospitalization that she stopped taking medication? Yes. And that was Savannah's decision? We discussed it together, yes. No doctor recommended she discontinue medication? Her ADHD medication was something she could stop in the summertime in the summer. Had she ever stopped it before in the summertime? I don't recall. doctor advised you to discontinue Savannah's medications. I know that there was a discussion with Dr. Bryan that ADHD meds are meant for concentration for school and academics and I had it was only said that it was, it was optional for the summertime. She was on additional medications for other. She was on additional medications that were meant for other conditions than ADHD. Correct. I assume so. Yes. And those were stopped as well. I think she was only for them in March. Was that under a doctor's care? I. Would have called Dr. Bryan, but I don't remember. And Dr. Bryan's located in Minnesota, correct? Yes. Not Montana. No. Okay. Katie waiver, you had to give reasons as to why you needed it, correct? Yeah. And you stated that you were employed part-time at the time you applied for that waiver, and the reason was because you had to address Savannah's behavior. You couldn't work full-time as a result? Correct. Okay. And at that time, which yesterday when we discussed that, I believe was November of 2015. Does that sound about right to you? That you applied for the waiver? That sounds about right, but I'm not sure exactly what that means. At that point in time, were you a two-adult, two-parent figure household? Yes. Okay. <clears throat>
And Tamil, there have been some uh, visits for you and, and Savannah's siblings to Missouri, correct? You had planned to, to come visit Savannah at some point? We had talked about it, yes. Okay. And were there three potential dates that had been discussed? I never recall. Um, having a deposition conducted relating to this case? Yes. And was that deposition in Minnesota? Yes. And was it myself and Ms. Duvall that were there <coughs> to ask you questions at that deposition? <coughs> yes. recall whether or not questions were asked <coughs> regarding visits to Missouri at that time. whether anyone from the family visited Savannah while she was in Missouri. Yes. And who was that? From Rebecca's side, her father visited. From my side, my mom, Sandy, and my dad, Jerry Montaigne. That's me. And had you previously discussed traveling to Missouri around Thanksgiving of 2016? I'm not recalling if I was going to go there or if she was planning just to come home. Is it fair to say then there had been a visit, whether it was returning to Minnesota or coming to Missouri, it had been discussed? It had been discussed, yeah. And that date would have been around Thanksgiving of yes. 2016? Yes. And did that happen? No. And was there another date that had been discussed? I think Christmas time we had talked about the potential to come home for a visit. Yeah. Um, had you talked about you going for a visit? There'd never been anything discussed about spring of 2016? Yes. What was discussed about spring of 2016? That the kids had to come down and the spring break time frame. And that didn't happen? No. And was there another visit that had been discussed? No. Was there a third time that you had discussed coming down in August of 2017? Yes, but many years. So from your side of the family, the only family members that visited Savannah while she was in Missouri were your parents, is that correct? That's correct. And was Savannah made aware of some of these potential visits? I know she was born in November. I don't know about the others.
prior to Savannah going to Missouri, had you ever been to Reba's home in Missouri? Did you have information about it? Did you understand where she lived and what facilities she had? Yes. Ms. Montek, were there one or were there one or multiple powers of attorney? There was two. Okay. And Miss Wellborn previously showed you one that was dated January 10th, 2017. Was there one before that? Yes. And were either one of those powers of attorney signed by David Leckie? No. Who was responsible for Spain's expenses when she had moved to Missouri? Living <coughs> expense. The two fifty that I put in was whatever the house was needed beyond that would have gone to Rebecca. 
this is what Lauren asked you about a spring of 16 visit. Was, was Savannah living in Missouri in spring of 16? Yes. In spring of 16? Oh, 16. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When, when did Savannah move to Missouri? August. Would that have been in 2016? I thought it was pretty 15. Some of the dates. Um, so what are they 16? Yeah, so, so now she does not. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> show you what I've marked as states because it eight. Do you recognize states exhibit eight? eight? <coughs> You're shaking your head. Is that a yes? Yes, I know. Okay. What is that? Some other state departments. And did you receive that? When did you receive that? <laughs> and would that have been uh, May of 2017? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation of that Mother's Day card that you received from Savannah? Yes, it is. At this time, Your Honor, I'm going to move to admit States Exhibit 8 in evidence. Have you seen? We do have one here. I would check just a moment. showed you, correct? And you signed that in January of 2017? Correct. Okay. And it didn't have David's signature at that time, correct? Correct. And I do think I may have misspoken about the time whenever you were planning to visit, and um, I think that Mr. Brown clarified it, but Savannah wasn't in Missouri in spring of 2016, correct? 
but there had been some plans or talk to go visit her when she was in Missouri, which would have been spring or June, uh, June of 2017, correct? I don't know whether it was I thought it was in March, April. I not in spring. In spring, April. okay. And just to clarify, just to make sure the date's correct, that. Um, the visit that was supposed to be in spring of 2017 did not take place, correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Are we down to the three? We've got one, uh, we've got Mr. Smart first, and then the three ladies. Let's take a five minute break. Now you can Mr. Smart.
please. Would you uh, state your full name first, please? Buddy Smart. <clears throat> Where do you live, sir? Bingville. And are you employed? I'm retired and I work on the side. Where do you work on the side? Monmore Shop. Here in Gainesville? In Gainesville. And uh, Mr. Smart, uh, do you know the defendant in this case, Rebecca Rood? Yes, I do. This person you know is Rebecca Rood in the courtroom today? Yes. Would you point, him out, point her out and describe what she's wearing, please? She's wearing a uh, White and about the best shirt, uh, tan, whatever you call it, it worked. Thank you. Uh, how'd you meet the defendant? I worked at BMW. I worked in Isabella. You know about how long ago that was? Back in 2016, 18, 16, 19. And uh, how did your relationship develop? We did the work plan boom, and all it was, we just got to work and she didn't smoke on the farm, so I went over and started helping on the farm. And did you eventually move in on that farm? Yes. Where's the farm located? It's located over at Thedos, between Thedos and Long Run. And do you recall when you moved in on the farm? September, toward the end of September. Of oh, what year? 16. Okay. And uh, who all was living on the farm at that time? It was uh, Rebecca, Savannah, and Elmer was there part time. And myself. Okay, Elmer. Who's Elmer? He's a truck driver that she knew that that uh, stopped in there when he went on when he went on roads. And what's Elmer's last name? Guthrie. Is he an acquaintance of yours? I knew of him. My dad didn't know him for years, but I knew of him. Okay. But he was only there on the weekends? Yeah, yeah weekends and sometimes he'd be staying there through the week, sometimes. When you were living there, wh where did you stay? Where would you sleep? I stayed in a little apartment in the shop. Okay. And where did Elmer stay when he was there? He was laying in his truck. Slept in his truck. Semi truck? Yes. You said uh, that uh, there's a child named Savannah living there with the defendant at that time? Yes. And how often were you around Savannah? Oh, we did woodwork and stuff, so it was about every, every day I was there and other days I worked. Okay, and what was your work schedule like then? Uh, were you on the farm every day? I was on a high on the farm every day other than Wednesdays and weekends. And where were you working then? I was working at the back of the lab on home. Okay. What kind of kid was Savannah? Smart and intelligent. He's a pretty good kid, yes. Happy kid? She was when I was around him. And how long were you around? How long do you, did you live on, on the farm? I'm not sure exactly when I did leave, but I think it was either the 1st of February or the 1st of March. I can't remember which. Of what year? 17. 2017. So, about six months, September to February, five, March of five, six months, yes. Okay. During that time that you were uh, living on the farm, did you ever know Savannah to try to hurt herself? 
Not that I've seen. You ever cut on herself or anything like that? Not that I've ever seen. What's Savannah do on, on the farm? She take care of the animals. She help out out for us. Move firewood. Move the firewood. Okay. What 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 kind of stuff? I, 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 I keep calling the farm, but what was was anything raised on the farm? There was goats raised on the farm. She took care of them too. Did y'all cut hay or wood? Mm -hmm. Cut wood. Uh, cut some hay, but it wasn't on the farm. How regular did you cut wood? About every day. And does Savannah participate in that? Yes. What kind of stuff does she do? She got a brush. She take a couple of wood. She take a put the wood over by the wood splitter so we so can split the wood. she a good worker? Yes. Were there any problems with uh, Savannah's hygiene? Keep it clean? Yes. All right. And what were those problems? Well, she wouldn't. She wouldn't take a bath. After a few days, she started smelling. So, yeah. When she wouldn't do those things, did the uh, defendant do anything about it? She wouldn't for a little while, and then she would. She get start smelling her and have her go clean up. What did the defendant do? Well, one time I know she took, took the water hose and washed her outside with water hose. Was that just one time? She may have water hosed her down. I know of one time, maybe twice, that I know of. I know it's been some time since these happened, but uh, do you remember uh, giving a deposition in my office in Gainesville in uh, March of 2018? Yes, I remember being in the office. Ms. Wellborn was there, and Mr. Kretzer and I were there. You were sworn, and Ms. Wellborn asked you a bunch of questions. Yes. Can I approach the witness? You may. I know this is awful difficult. This is the only path I have. This is very difficult to see. Both can put the glasses. And Ms. Wellborn, we're at uh, uh, page 26, line 25, into page 27. And Mr. Smart, can you read that? Mm -hmm. That last sentence there, and you go on to the sentence here. I agree with your memory was a little bit better back in uh, 2018 than it was today. Yeah, it was pressure back then. And back then you said that uh, she had hosed her down. Your Honor, I'm going to object um, as to leading here. Well, if he just refreshed his memory, he should be able to testify as to what happened. Okay. Bring ask your question. All right. Back then when you talked about Pause them down, what did you say? Your Honor, I'm actually going to object as the foundation here, too. He hasn't established that Mr. Smart recognizes or has, has read that and has agreed that it is an accurate representation, okay. any of that stuff. Okay. That's the question. Well, actually, there's a problem with this because when we did this, there was a stipulation as to how we we're going to handle this, this deposition if it was because there was no court reporter present. And my understanding was the uh, uh, agreement was if the transcript was prepared, we could use it at trial. Was I mistaken? Properly. Do you remember giving your deposition? Yes. And have you had a chance to read through this deposition? No. I, okay. I haven't read all the way through. Right, no. Let, let's just take a break. You read it, and then we'll come back. So take however long you want to read through your depot and then we'll come back to the questions. 
We will be here for a while, Judge. It's 86 pages. Well, I mean, they're saying he can't identify it. He says, I haven't read it. So he's not I've, saying that's mine. I've read part of it. I have not read all of it because it's so small print and I'm working and I have not read all of it. Okay. I'm just saying the question was, have you read it? And you said no. I've read part of it, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. But you can't. Can you say that that is your deposition? This is my de de deposition, yes, that I did. Uh, then go ahead. Okay, and at that time, when you said that uh, she had been hosed down three times in a month, correct? Yes. All right. Did the defendant do anything else uh, regarding uh, Savannah's hygiene? What do you mean? Uh, did she have her bathe anyplace else? She, she did have her to go into the pond one time. I'm going to object here as to relevance. Whenever the state amended their information to allege that Savannah's death was caused by burning or drugging, any of this stuff relating to hygiene or, or alleged abuse um, is no longer relevant to the charge that they're trying to prove. Go ahead. Did she put her in the pond? No. She walked into the pond. Rebecca did not put her in the pond. Okay. Uh, who directed her to go into the pond? Who directed, who directed her? Yes. Was she told to go in the pond? Rebecca. Yeah. Okay. And did she bathe in the pond? Yes. This is, do you remember what month this was? Not exactly. It had been somewhere around between December and probably February, January, February, right in there somewhere. I'm not exactly sure when it was. And uh, were there any hogs raised on the farm? There was, there was an hog there when I got there. Yes. And uh, where was, where were the uh, the hogs uh, kept? They were kept in the pen beside the job. And was there ever an incident involving Savannah and the hog pen? Yes. Can you explain that for us? I really can't explain it because I did not witness it. I know she took her back there to make her crawl in the hog pen because she wanted to be dirty. But I did not witness it and I don't know if she actually did or not. Did you see Savannah after that, that incident? No, I didn't. You didn't see her at all after that incident? Oh, I seen her. After she cleaned up, she came back and shot, yes. After she cleaned up? Yes. After going through the pop pen? As far as I know, she did. Okay. Did uh, Savannah have any small pets? I think she had a guinea pig when I got over, and then her little goat that she had, a baby goat spray. And where'd she keep the guinea pig? In her camper. And what happened to that guinea pig? He got taken away. By whom? Reba handed it to me to take and had me to go get rid of it. Why'd you have to do that? I'm not for sure um, why. I wasn't told why I did go get rid of it. Oh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Smart. All right, Mr. Smart, I do have some questions for you here. Mr. Smart, um, you were also, in addition to the interview or the deposition that you did in Mr. Garibrandt's office back in 2018, you were also interviewed by law enforcement, correct? Yes. All right. Um,
And do you recall whether you made any statements about guinea pigs to law enforcement? I'm not for sure. I don't know if they asked or not. Okay. I had some questions for you about um, about the hogs. Um, you said that when you arrived at Reba's to, to, re to reside, there were hogs, correct? Yes. How, do you recall how many? Were there a lot, just a couple? Two, I think. Were they big? Were they babies being raised up? Or what do you remember about them? They were, they were being raised up. They got old and they got big enough to where they went to their rival owners. Okay, so they they were removed from the farm. Yes. Do you recall when that happened? No, I don't. Okay. Were there, um, even though you stated you didn't observe anything about this alleged hog pen incident, um, you said you were aware of roughly when it happened? Or no. But I, I was in the building whenever she had her to go do it. I did not wait. Okay. Do you remember what month that was, or roughly? Roughly. I'm not for sure. It, okay. It was before I left the work. There were no hogs in the pen at no. the time, and it had been a little while since there had been hogs out there. Yes. Okay. And I know back in 2018, we asked you some questions or some additional questions about um, the pond incident, correct? Yes. And I recall we asked you about um, Savannah's demeanor at that time, correct? Like how she how she was behaving or how how she felt about the whole situation. Do you recall that? Not really, but I'm sure you did ask me. Okay. So if you don't remember asking, do you remember, you probably wouldn't remember what you answered then, would you? I really can't, no, I don't know what I answered really. Uh, Savannah wasn't upset. I didn't hear she was, but she didn't want to get in the pond the whole time I was over anyway. But. Okay. And did she come back into the building in the warmth at that point quickly or? What happened after she came out of the pond? She she went back to the, the camper. I went in the shop. She she got her clothes off and went in the camper and cleaned up and then come out of the shop. Yes. And she was able then to immediately get warmed up, yeah. rest, shower, yeah. whatever needed yes. to happen. Okay. And there was heat available then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And she was allowed to go near the heat source and yes. warm up. Okay. Was the guinea pig in good condition whenever whenever you took it? It seemed to be his. Okay. Was it being taken care of properly? As far as I know it was, the man is the one that took care of it. It was in the camper? It was in the camper. Yes. Did you go in the camper? The only time I was in the camper is whenever we take and go in there to eat supper or something like that. But no. Do you recall what the weather was like on the day of the walking into the pond? It was it wasn't all that cold. I was out there in the desert. I didn't have a jacket on. Okay. It wasn't icy cold. No, it wasn't snow or ice. No. Okay. Not like dangerous wind chill or anything no. like that. Okay. Maybe one of those warmer January days we get in Missouri. Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. No, sir. Thank you. You made that bet. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Smartly, finally excuse Judge, you may. Next equipment. You need to come this way, sir. Okay. Next the wrong way. Wow. I don't know which way they're going to come, but they Yeah, uh, I think I'll start with Jessica. She's pretty good. Okay. 
Your Honor, the State will call Jessica Wallen. When did those occur? Uh, 2016, 2017. All right. Are you currently on uh, probation or parole? I am. Uh, which one? Uh, parole. All right. Uh, have you been in trouble since? Oh. Uh, have you ever spent time in uh, Missouri's county jails? Yes. Uh, in 2017, were you housed in a county jail? Yes. Which jail? Uh, Green, Douglas, and Ozark. Okay. Uh, when, when were you housed in the Ozark County Jail? I want to say it was from May or June of 2017 to October of 2017. Okay. And uh, what charges were you being housed on in Ozark County? Uh, drug trafficking, but it was for Douglas County. I was just being housed there. Okay, so your your charges were out of Douglas, but you were being housed in Ozark County. Correct. All right. And is there anybody here in the courtroom today that you recognize from your time at the Ozark County Jail? Yes. Uh, could you identify that person for us? Rebecca Rudd. Uh, could you point her out and tell us what she's wearing? Um, she's right here at this table. She's wearing a polka dotted shirt and a um, okay. over jacket. I would ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. I will. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, when you arrived at the Ozark County Jail, was the defendant already housed there? No. All right. Uh, when did she uh, arrive to the Ozark County Jail? Um, I've been there probably a month and a half, I'd say. Uh, were you in the same pod as the defendant? I was. And how many women were in that pod? Um, when she came with like five or six, I'd say. Uh, was there also a woman named Sarah Johnson with you in the pod at some point? Yes. Uh, do you recall when she was housed with you in that pod? She was already there when Rebecca came in, I want to say, but I really don't recall. All right. Did you and the, the uh, defendant have occasions to talk while you all were incarcerated in the Ozark County Jail? Yes. And do you remember the nature of your conversations with the defendant? Yeah. All right. And were they about her pending charges? Um, not at first, but eventually, yes. Okay. Did, did you and the defendant ha establish a rapport with each other? Sure. Yeah. All right. And uh, did you eventually ask what the defendant was charged with? Um, I knew ahead of time what she was charged with. Um, it's kind of a big deal when they got brought in. I had no idea what was going on, of course. Um, was it was it kind of the talk of the jail? Yeah, yeah. It was on the news, so of course everybody knew about it. Right. Um, did uh, you and a bit, you and the defendant eventually talk about her case? Yes. Right. And did you and the defendant ever talk about? her daughter and her daughter's adoptive mom. Yes. Can you tell us about that conversation? Um, she was concerned about um, something to do with money and trying to save her farm. She was, the adoptive mother had owed her some money. I really don't recall the logistics of what transpired um, financially between the two. Um, but there was a conversation held, yes. But uh, it was a discuss it, it was a conversation about money. Yeah. All right. Did she mention not getting money? Yeah. And was it, would that have been from her adoptive mom? Yes, correct. Right. Do you recall the defendant ever talking about uh, pills? Yes. Uh, could you tell what? Could you tell us about that conversation? Um, she wanted to know if I knew 
if there was any way to trace any kind of pain medication in a person's system, how long it was there, um, things of that nature. All right, what kind of pills were those? Did she mention that? Hydrocodones. Was the discussion of hydrocodone pills prompted or unprompted? It was unprompted. She came to me um, with questions regarding her case um, and just kind of some advice, I guess. And was there a claim about the, uh, did, did the defendant ever talk about using those pills in any way? She did. She um, said that she had crushed some up and put them in some Kool-Aid and gave them to her daughter. Okay. Uh, did uh, did she tell you her, who her daughter was? She did. All right, who was that? Savannah. All right. And did you and the defendant ever talk about Robert Pete? Um, briefly. All right, what was that about? Um, that she had just married him. Um, they weren't together for too long before they got married. Um, there wasn't very in-depth conversation, but... Did she tell you why she got married to Robert Pete? That he couldn't testify against her. Did you ever see the defendant express any remorse about her daughter? Not a single time. Now, uh, have, you ever, have you been offered anything uh, in consideration for your testimony here today? Absolutely not. Okay. And in fact, did you go to prison? I did. Okay. And uh, were you ever charged in Ozark County by yeah. Mr. Garibrandt with anything? No. Nope. Uh, so, no plea deal with Mr. Garibrandt? No. I, I came to the sheriff, I guess. Um, I willingly came forward because it just was so sick. I, being a mother, I just didn't understand. Is it is it safe to say that the uh, things that the defendant told you shocked your senses? Absolutely, absolutely. At this time, Judge, I'll pass the witness. Hello, Miss Johnson. No, this is Miss Walton. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Walton. Okay. Sorry, the wrong one. Um, did you, uh, when you were in that pod, how many people were in a pod or a cell together? Um, at the time, there was, I want to say five to six, not much more than that. Okay. And was there a, um, were you able to use a phone at, in the cell? Okay. And was there a phone in your cell area there? No, just in the pod, um, the day room where everybody would be out of their cells. Okay, so so anybody could overhear your conversations. Absolutely. Okay, and you could hear other people's conversations. Mm -hmm. All right. And did you? Um, sorry, just one Do you know um, a Kathy Hilton? No, ma'am. Okay. But you do know, um, you do know Sarah Johnson? Yes. All right. And you were in the pod together at the same time? Yeah. With the same time that you were in there with um, Ms. Root? Yes. Okay. And you said that you, I believe you told them that you did not get any, um, consideration for making your statement you just come forward correct yes but you asked for some didn't you you asked for some consideration when you wrote a letter correct oh yeah yeah I did and in that letter you I said uh, I've been quite helpful in your investigation correct yes, yes. and I've a given a written statement mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I would typically never do anything like that Okay. And um, you are probably, you and, now, and I'm going to ask you this, did you and Sarah sign this letter? I don't recall. Okay. 
Okay, so you are uh, probably one of the state, the their best witnesses, correct? I have no idea. I haven't followed the case. I don't know much about it. That's what you told them in this letter. Well, just because of the confession that I just heard. Okay. Um, and then you say, please, uh, really, I've turned my life around. Please help. Us. Yeah, I was just trying to state to the court that I wanted to make a change in my life. I was doing the right thing, and I just wanted that to be. Noted. But you wanted some help with something, correct? For your statement. That wasn't the reason for my statement. That came after the fact. Who did you send this letter to? I really don't even know. It's been so long ago. So do you, I think you mentioned earlier that you, uh, that you did give a, provide a written statement. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Who did you actually, did you talk with someone? I did. Who did you talk to? I believe it was uh, Deputy Dobbs. Okay. Do you know if that conversation was recorded in any way? I believe it was. And during part of that conversation, do you know the date of that statement? No, I don't. Have you reviewed your statement before coming in today? <laughs> Uh, briefly, yes. Okay. And um, so, during in your statement, you uh, tell or uh, you're, you're writing that you have uh, talked with Reba for a, a while, and she talks about money, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, you talk about uh, that she wants to protect her um, her husband. From anything, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Is that a yes or yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I approach the witness, Sharon. Jessica, uh, I'm going to show you what I've marked as for identification purposes as Defendant's Exhibit M. And can you tell me uh, what this says it is? It's a voluntary statement. Okay. And is that your name? It is. Is that your handwriting? It is. Okay. And you, uh, looks like there's a statement there, correct? Correct. And is that your signature at the it bottom? Is. Okay. So you recognize this document. Yes, ma'am. Can you just read over that um, to yourself and then I'll ask you some more questions? <coughs> get a chance to yes, refresh your recollection yes. on that? Okay. Um, in this uh, statement that you made, looks like it's about a paragraph long, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you talk about uh, putting drugs and Kool-Aid anywhere in there? 
No. Um, but the, I just asked you if yes, you did. No, I did not. And um, I may have just. Okay. So um, the you, you te you're testifying today that there were drugs and she said something about drugs and Kool-Aid, but you didn't write that at the time. No, I did not. And your memory would have been more uh, been more closer to the time that she said this when you wrote this, correct? Correct. So your testimony your your testimony is different today. It is. Can I elaborate? No. <laughs> Um, were you were you talked to by someone else later, actually more recently, by a law enforcement officer involved with the case? Like uh, April? Yes. Oh, okay. And did you make another statement then? Yes. Okay. And that was that statement that you, or when you talked to the other law enforcement officer in, I guess, April of 22, um, that's like four and a half years later, correct? Correct. And there's been a lot of media attention to this case, hasn't there been? I, I have followed it. I'm sure there has. Okay. Nothing further. Just a few redirect questions, Your Honor. Is everything that you had to offer in that written statement, all the information you had to offer in that written statement? No, at the very bottom it says, I'd rather talk to an officer in person. And why would you rather talk to an officer in person? Just because there's so much detail. Um, I didn't want to write it all out. I was just, I just wanted to speak on it. And Ms. Duvall mentioned a note about asking for uh, asking for something from the sheriff or the, or the court, correct? Correct. And you never received anything, correct? No, I did not. Right. Uh, and do you know, have, have, you, have you followed media attention in this case? I haven't, honestly. Uh, have you talked, other than with law enforcement, have you talked with anybody else about this case since you were released from jail? No. No further questions, Your Honor. And you did say that you spoke with a law enforcement officer. You actually got to speak with one, correct? Yes. And is there any, um, do, you, do you recall whether or not you told them that there was drugs in a Kool-Aid? Yeah, I did. If they, uh, further from the state, Your Honor. Okay. I do. Okay. When did you write that statement? What was the date on the statement again? Uh, okay. I, just, may I approach the witness, Your Honor? Okay. I don't think I got it out, so I don't know that. Oh. Um, what, when, what date did you write that statement? September 1st, 2017. When did you make the unwritten statement to the deputy. It was the same day. They pulled me out right after I... And that was with Dobbs? Yes. Did you ever see any police report about that conversation with the, the officer? I don't believe so. I and in that, in that statement, 
you said several things about what Ms. Rude has told you, right? But you left out the, the statement of, she said she crushed up some pills and put, the, put them in the Kool-Aid for the victim. Right, correct. And at the bottom, I put that I wanted to speak with an officer because I felt like it was all going to be recorded. Um, and I just didn't want to write everything out. Um, there was so much detail, there was so much going on that I didn't realize I needed to write it all in a written statement. But you wrote out about, uh, she talked to you about her daughter and adopted mom and not getting money, you wrote all mm -hmm. that out? Yeah. Um, and you wrote out that there was any way to trace pills, uh, such as hydro? Yeah, I did not write that. You didn't write that? No, I verbally spoke it, it was being recorded. As far but you as thought it was more important to put out that she was complaining about not getting money from the adopted mom I than just, the others? I just felt like it was more important. Okay, you can set okay. down. I guess we want to break for lunch. I assume that they're all going to be about 15, 20, 30 minutes long. I, I think Ms. Johnson will be about 15, 20, 30 minutes long. Maybe Ms. Hilton will probably be longer, Your Honor. So you're going to do her one of them now or break for lunch? Uh, let's do Ms. Johnson now and okay. then we can break for lunch. Okay. So uh, the state would call Sarah Johnson. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. What have you been convicted of? Uh, I was convicted back in 2013 after a child endangerment charge. Okay. Uh, were you uh, were you placed on probation for that? Yes, I was. All right. And did you have occasion to violate your probation at some point? Yes. And were you placed in jail for that? Yes. And uh, at some point, uh, have you been housed in? Well, you just answered that you've been housed in jail. Were at some point were you housed in the Ozark County Jail? Yes. What year was that? 2017. Right. Uh, you recall why you were housed there? Um, I was. I had pending charges at a Douglas County, and my co-defendant in that case caused some problems, so I got transferred to Ozark County to be housed there. All right. And do you recall what dates you were housed in Ozark County? I'm not sure the exact date. It was around the middle of August until my first week of September. And. Uh, uh, what happened with your Douglas County charges? They were dropped. And is there anybody here in the courtroom today that you recognize from the Ozark County Jail? Yes. All right. And who is that? And is that the woman seated at the end of the council table? Yes. All right. I ask that the witness has uh, the record reflected the witness. Witness has identified the defendant. They will. Thank you. Uh, was uh, the defendant in the Ozark County Jail when you arrived? No, she was not. Uh, when was she brought in? Exactly. But uh, uh, was uh, when she w when she arrived in the Ozark County Jail, uh, was she placed in general population or in solitary confinement? Uh, I believe that she was in a holding cell. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I believe that she was in a holding cell for a few days before but, they brought her in. Okay. Was she eventually uh, released from that holding cell? Your Honor, I'm gonna. He's leading the witness. He's giving all the answers. Okay. Yes, Ms. Duval. I'll ask another question. Did you eventually have contact with the defendant? Yes. Was that after she re was released from the holding cell? Yes. All right. Uh, how many women were housed in that pod with you? Sixty-seven. There wasn't very many of us. Was the defendant housed with you? Yes. Was she your cellmate? She was. And during your time as uh, being her cellmate, did you build a rapport with her? We talked a lot. We played cards a lot. 
can you tell us about your your acquaintanceship with the defendant? Uh, how friendly were, were you with her? We weren't like too friendly, but we did talk. I mean, when she'd get down a little bit, she'd go into the cell and I'd go in there and ask her if she was okay and if she ever needed to talk or wanted to talk, she could talk to me. And, and did y'all talk? A few times we did. And did you ask about uh, what she was in for? No, I did not. All right, did you ask her what she was charged with? I did not. Did she talk to you about what she was charged with? Not that I can recall. Did you write a, did you provide a written statement to law enforcement? show you what I marked at States Exhibit 34. First statement. You could take a moment. Oh, well, first off, do you recognize that? Yes. Is that your written statement? Yes, it is. And um, could you take a moment to read that, read over that written statement? And I'm going to ask you some questions. the defendant talk about her daughter? On occasion. Okay. Can you tell me about those conversations? Uh, there was one conversation. It was after they had locked us down in our cell and shut the lights down. We had went and sat on the floor by the door because it was the only light source that we could get from the day room. And we were playing cards. I don't remember exactly how the conversation came about. But there was a conversation about how her daughter had run away and that her daughter, uh, excuse me, <laughs> about how her daughter had run away and that her daughter was real big on pills and had taken off with one of her prescriptions when she had took off. Okay. Uh, did she ever give you any background information about her daughter? Did you and the defendant ever talk about the murder of Savannah? No, not really. It was mainly more that she was so sad that she had ran off and run away. And she told you that she ran away from the farm? Yes, that she believed that she had ran away. Okay. Uh, during her time in the uh, jail, with, during your time with, in the jail with her, was was there ever a discussion about bones being located? Your Honor, again, I'm going to object to him leading the witness. It is not leading the witness, Ms. Yep. Duvall. Can she answer that question, Your Honor? Yeah. Thank you. There was a discussion once it came across the point that, that... That's not the question. Did, the question was, was there ever a discussion about bones and that's, with the defendant? Okay. What was that discussion? Could you tell us the details of that? Um, the discussion was that when the bones had came back and they had made a positive identity on it, she was 100% certain that it was not her daughter, that it was not a 100% match, a 99.9% .9 match is not enough, in her words, to make an identity because it wasn't 100%. Uh, were you ever charged in Ozark County, Missouri, with any crimes? No. Did you... Um, did, did you receive any sort of consideration for your testimony here today? 
did you ask the sheriff or ask the court or ask the prosecutor for a potential uh, plea deal or anything in regards to this information? Uh, do you recall um, sending a letter? Uh, strike that. Did you talk to the Ozark County Sheriff's Office about your about this information? Yes. And did you talk with a a, a member of the Attorney General's office with? I do not recall. Okay. Um, Did you, uh, and you said your charges were dropped? Out of Douglas County, yes. Do you know why? Um, my co-defendant in that case uh, took the charges so they'd be dropped against me because they were, everything that I was being charged with was his. Yeah, what kind of charge was it? Um, I had a uh, felon in possession of a firearm and uh, hindering the prosecution of the felon. Okay. Was, uh, <coughs> can you tell us, oh, sorry, that. No further questions for this witness. Okay. Ms. Sharp. Ms. Johnson, um, I just I have just a couple of things to go over with you. So uh, I want to make sure I'm understanding. So you were in a pod. You were there was a pod, and in that pod there's different cells. Is yes. that okay? And you were in a cell with Miss Root, or were you just in the pod with Miss? I was in a cell. Okay. And when. Um, let me ask you about pho uh, phones. Can you make phone calls from the jail? Um, in the day room, they have a phone in the day room, but that is the only phone in the pod. Okay, but it's in the pod? Yes. Okay, and can you hear people when they're on the phone? Sometimes, it just depends on if they talk louder or they decide to hush hush quiet. People can hear you? Yeah. Okay, and do you ever make any phone calls on that phone? Every that you could recall. While, every once in a while, I think I made like one or two at home just to see how everybody was doing. Do you know if, if uh, Reba made any phone calls? Do you recall if she made any phone calls? She did. Okay. And so you could have possibly overheard some of her calls? It's possible. Okay. And in your, um, I, I actually just want to, if I may approach the witness, Your Honor. Okay. And they've, I'm, we have something marked, but I'm just going to use the state's marked copy already. And this is going to be state's exhibit. Is that 34? I'm sorry. 34, yes. Okay. 34. And I just want to ask you a couple of questions about it. So, um, is the, that states it's a voluntary statement, correct? Correct. And this is, is that your name? Yes. Uh, Sarah Johnson? Yes. And is that your handwriting? Yes. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. And what date was that written on? September 1st, 2017. All right. And at what time? About 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay. And you were, at that time, you were uh, pod mates, anyway, with um, with Jessica uh, Wellen. Okay. <coughs> and um, so you had access to talk to Ms. Wellen while you were in custody? I did have access, yes. Okay. And um, I get. I do want to ask. Yes, I do want to ask you one other question. Um, oh, sorry. I'll give this to you. Snatch it back. Uh, in your st in your testimony today, you said that. Um, that you did talk to her when she was feeling down. Is that correct? Correct. And you would go into the into the cell and talk to her? If that's where she was, yes. Okay. So was there any other people in the cell with you at that time or just you and her? It was just me and her. Okay. Do you know why she was down? Did she ever tell you? She was concerned about Robert and how what she could do to protect him. And did she ever say anything? Was she down about anything else that you recall? No, not that I recall. Okay. And you wrote a, do you recall writing a letter along with uh, Jessica um, to, uh, about uh, getting some special treatment or getting something out of your testimony? I remember there being a letter, yes. Okay. Do you have anything? 
And do you recall signing that letter? I do not recall signing it. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit O for identification purposes. Can you uh, look at that letter? I'm just going to look at it and read it to yourself. And is your signature on the bottom of that page? That is my name, but that is not my signature. Okay. Were you aware of this? Um, I had heard something about there being a letter written. But you didn't authorize didn't, a letter written? I didn't physically sign it, no. Um, okay. Did, um, well, that, that's, I have no further questions. Yes, did you and Jessica Wallen ever talk about your testimony here today? No. Have you seen Jessica Wallen since you left the Ozark County Jail? I have not. Do you know Kathy Hill? No. Did you receive any sort of special treatment for your testimony here today? No. No further questions? Nothing further. You're free to go. Thank you. We take lunch break, break for lunch. See you back at 115. Yes, it's each other. Huh? picked it up and put it in. Okay. But. Fair enough. Almost that. Yeah. One more
Okay. 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 Could you state your name for the record? Kathy Hilton. Miss Hilton, uh, the first thing I'm going to get to is have you been convicted of any crimes? I absolutely have. What have you been convicted of? Forgery and stealing. Okay, where were those uh, convictions out of? Green and Christian and Taney County. Okay, uh, were they all around the same time? Yes. All right, do you have any pending charges? No. Are you currently on probation? I am. All right. Uh, in 2018, well, strike that. Have you, uh, when those charges were pending, did you have occasion to spend time in, in Missouri's county jails? I did. Did you spend time in the Taney County Jail? I did. When did you spend time in the Taney County Jail? Um, it was the first part of 2018 is when I got arrested, and that's why I was at until June. The first of June, I think, and then I was transferred. Okay, out of Taney County. Out of Taney County, yes. And when you were housed in Taney County, uh, were you in a pod in that jail? I guess. It was. And how many people were in that pod with you? Uh, I don't know. There's quite a few of those girls. Is there anybody here in the courtroom today that you recognize from your time at the Taney County Jail? Absolutely. All right. And could you identify that person and tell us what she's wearing? Rebecca. She's wearing a tan looking something, I don't know what she's going on there. Okay. I would ask the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. I will. And when you arrived at the Taney County Jail, was the defendant already there? Yes, she was. And did you have, uh, did you and the defendant develop a rapport of any kind? We did. And could you tell us about that? When I first got in there, she kind of she just started socializing with me and stuff and started doing my hair in the mornings and stuff and that's where we kind of communicated and started to get to know each other. Okay. And uh, was that your first encounter with the defendant, what y'all doing each other's hair? Yes, I had never met her before prior. And let me ask you, had you followed this case at all prior to your time in jail? Absolutely not. Didn't know anything about it until I got to jail. All right. And uh, were you generally following any media coverage prior to your time to jail? No, I was not in the right state of mind to okay. be worrying about anything else that was going on in the world. All right. And while you guys were doing each other's hair, did y'all talk about what you were in for? Yes, we did. And what did Miss, uh, what did the defendant tell you she was she in for? She told me she was in there for murdering her daughter. All right. And at first, uh, did she tell you any facts about her case at first? No. I asked her at first if she did it. She told me no. All right. And then okay. we just talked from there. Over the course of your time at the Taney County Jail, did you build a friendship with the defendant? Yes, at first, yes. Okay. Did she eventually talk to you about the circumstances she leading did. up to the murder? Yes, she did. Did she tell you who who was dead? Yeah, her daughter. Okay. Did she say who her daughter was? I don't remember her name. Okay. All right. And did she tell you about her daughter's death? Yes, she did. What did she tell you? Uh, you want me to tell you what she told me, what she did? Yes. Okay. Uh, she murdered her daughter. She drugged her daughter. And after she drugged her daughter, she took her daughter to a piece. Of, she had some kind of a farm or something that they lived on. She took her daughter to a burn pile that she had on the property, placed her daughter in there, and burned her child. But her child wasn't dead. Her child came back to life. Went in the middle of burning her, and she beat her in the face with a rake. I'm pretty sure it was a rake, and, and until she was gone. Okay. Now let me back up a little bit uh, about the drugging. Did she give you any specifics about the drugging? I, I, I don't know in great detail. I just know I remember her telling me that she had drugged her. I don't know what with, okay. but that's she had drugged her. All right. Did the defendant tell you anything about her husband? Yeah, she was pretty obsessed with him. Okay. Did uh, did you see who that was? I don't remember his name, but I I know she's pretty fond of him. All right. <clears throat> Miss Hilton, do you know Sarah Johnson? Do you know a Sarah Johnson? Is that a no? No. Do you know a Jessica Wallen? 
No. Were you ever housed during the pendency of your charges in the Ozark County Jail? No. Were you ever, did you receive anything from the state of Missouri in uh, consideration for your testimony here today? Absolutely not. Uh, who prosecuted you? What counties prosecuted you? A uh, Christian County prosecutor in Tane, but my case was in Tane County. It, it was a Christian County case in Tane County? It was All a right. Tane County case, but Christian County prosecutor was who done my case. Okay. Um, and the Christian County prosecutor, did they give you any sort of special consideration for Absolutely your testimony? I, I didn't ask for anything either because I knew I was just going to get probation. I'd never been in trouble prior. Okay. Uh, and you said you, you also received charges out of Greene County? I did. Did the Greene County prosecutor give you anything in consideration? Absolutely did not. Did Mr. Garibrink here, as the former Ozark County prosecutor, give you anything in consideration? No, he did not. Why are you testifying today here as a witness? Um, because as a person and the way I was raised and the way I believe, I just, it's the right thing to do. That child can't speak for herself. And somebody's got to speak for her, I guess. And I was, I just, what she did is just terrible. I want to go back real quick to your criminal convictions. Was there also an incident where you stuck some uh, pills into the jail? I did. And did you plead guilty to that? I did. And did you receive probation for that? I did. All right, at this time, Your Honor, I'll pass this witness. <coughs> Good afternoon, Ms. Hilton. Hi. I have a few questions for you. I have some stuff to go over. So, um, you, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but were you arrested on May 19th for forgery? Of 20, I'm sorry, of 2018. I don't exactly know the date. But yes, I was arrested in 2018 at some time the first of that year. Okay. And if I told you that the, the records indicate that it was the 19th, would you have any reason to doubt that? Probably not, no. Okay. And um, you, I, I want to talk to you about the, uh, the drug charge that you had. You brought drugs into the jail. I absolutely did. On the 19th? Yes, I did. And on the 20th of of May they found those, correct? I don't know what date it was. I was Was it the day after you got there? I can't even tell you. Okay. I just know it was after I had gotten there. Were you pun other than the charges that you received for that, were you punished uh, in the jail in any manner for that? I was on lockdown. Okay. And do you know how long you were on lockdown for? Not very long. Okay. I, maybe a little over a week, I believe. Okay. And do you recall the date that you came, uh, that you talked to the officers about your statement? No, I do not. Okay. Approach the witness, Your Honor. Um, is this a appear to be a voluntary statement? Yes. Okay. And is that your name on there? It is. And does that appear to be your handwriting? Yes. Okay. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. And what's the date on that? Six five of eighteen. Okay. So, do you have any reason to doubt that it would have been six five of eighteen when you spoke to them? That's probably when I spoke to them. Okay. <clears throat> now, I want to just go over a few things. I know the prosecutor asked you about some of the things that you had actually been in trouble for. That's right. Um, so, you've been in trouble for forgery, correct? Yes. And that was six counts of forgery, correct? Uh, and my, in out of Taney County it was. Yes, yes. That's, okay. And uh, you were convicted of stealing out of Christian County? Yes. And that was one count of stealing? Yes. 
And you were convicted of possession of controlled substance based on the drugs you brought into the jail. Yes. Okay. And you also had um, two convictions for non-support, correct? Yeah, but it's pale. Okay. But you did. You weren't convicted of those. Okay. Now, you, so I think, let me look at my paperwork here. Sure had something looking at something correctly. <coughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. I think that I forgot to uh, mention earlier when I approached the witness that the document she was looking at was marked for identification purposes um, as Defendant's Exhibit P. forgery case that you were arrested on in May of 2018, did you, prior to pleading guilty to that, did you look at police reports and the evidence provided by the state against you? No. You didn't? I don't. I don't. Yeah, they showed me something when I very first got arrested, but I was not in good shape when I got arrested. Did you have an attorney? I had some public defender, yeah. Okay. And that, that, that person never went through the discovery with you? No. Okay. But you pled guilty to that? I did. I wanted out of jail. Okay. Well, I just want to make clear, because there's some confusion. So, um, on that, if the police report on that, for, for that, indicated that you were arrested on May 19th of 2018, would you have any reason to doubt that? No, I, I wouldn't. All right. And if the police report for the possession of the controlled substance indicated that it was found on you on May 20th, so which was the next day of 2018, would you have any reason to doubt that? No, I wouldn't think so. All right. And then you were placed in the hole. or right, let, I say the hole. I'm sorry. Uh, locked down, correct? All right. And... Um, and you were placed, you, you don't recall how long you were placed in lockdown? I do not. Okay. Exactly know how long I was in lockdown. And do you have, uh, could it have been 20 days? No, it was not that long. I don't think so. I don't. But you don't have any really. I don't have range. an exact date, but I don't think I was. I were you placed in lockdown any other time during your time here? For, um, flashing someone maybe? Hey, oh, Objection, yeah. your honor. I don't. That's the, 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 the thing. Okay. okay. Um, so, 
So I have some questions about something, and I, maybe you can help me out with that. You were arrested. Well, it, do you do you recall you recall speaking with the detectives that day, right? No, I'm sorry. On the day, on June fifth, when you spoke to them. You, I guess if that was the date, yeah. Yeah. We, well, we went over that on the report. Right? Yeah. Okay. They, yeah, I remember talking to them. Yes. And that was of June fifteenth of twenty eighteen, or June fifth. I'm sorry, June fifth of twenty eighteen. Yeah. Okay. And do you recall? T uh, you told them. You told them that uh, you had been in custody about a month at that time, correct? I, I have no idea. Have you reviewed any statements that you made besides your written statement? No. Police reports regarding the statements? No. Talked to any other law enforcement since that time? No. Talked to any investigators from the prosecutor's office during that time, since that time? No, not that I can recall. Okay. Other than when I met with them. And them, you're speaking of who? The cops and the prosecuting attorney there. Okay. And when was that? The other day. Okay. So prior to that, you hadn't met with anybody else? Like, no, no. The only other cop I talked to was the cop that served me a subpoena. Okay. In your statement, um, to uh, from June fifth, you indicated that Miss Rude had told you she had live burns on her arm. Correct. Yes. And um, you you wrote that in your statement. It was important. Correct. Uh, I don't know. I have been. You know, I skimmed over it the other day. I bet I can't even tell you what it said. I okay. Don't. May I approach her? I've not thought about this since the day I left jail. I'm going to let you read through that. And you don't have to read that loud, just read through it, refresh your memory. This and I'm gonna go over this with you here. And uh, you say here, and, and you can correct me if I'm saying this wrong, but said she knows they didn't find any bones on her place because she got rid of all of them. She said that that's how she got the burns on her arms because of stuff lie splashed on her. I don't know. Does that say that? I can't see because I don't have my glasses on, so I'm looking at it as best as I can, okay? Okay.
not certified. But okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Q. And I'm going to ask you just a few questions about this. And if you need to hold it up to you so you can see it, that would be fine. Uh, is this your name? It is. Okay. And do you recall... Um, and, let's see here. and what is this your name? It is. Okay. And is that... I'm not going to read it. Is that your Social Security number? Yeah. And is that what you were charged with? Yes. Okay. And is Saturday, May 19th, when it says that they placed you under arrest? Yes, that's what it says. Okay. Now, I would ask to take judicial notice of Taney County case number 1846 CR 00823-01. I have an objection to that, Judge. Be admitted. Take judicial notice. <clears throat> May I approach? I'm kind of going to go through the same thing here with this one. So, is this your name? Yes. Okay. And is this the charge that you were uh, charged with for the drugs you brought into the jail? Yes. Okay. And does this say here... The criminal offenses occurred on the 20th of May, May uh, 2018? Yeah. Okay. I would ask the court to take judicial notice of Taney County Case 1846-CR-02589-01. And what is the exhibit? I'm sorry, Your Honor. It is the... Uh, this is actually just the uh, case net printout of the charges. I thought you put an exhibit sticker on it. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Defendant's Exhibit R. Okay. Any objection? I mean, I think it's cumulative because she's already admitted to what she's been convicted of, but I have no objection. I'll take judicial notice and we'll admit it. talk to you about. Um, you just testified that you were raised to be truthful. Yeah. But you were charged with forgery and That's stealing. right. I've had, I, had a, I had a moment in life in 2017. Not proud of it, but I owned it. I got into Okay, I don't need it, an so. explanation. I just ask you a question. A yes or no question. Did you, um, and you said, I believe you testified just a moment ago that you were raised to do right by kids. Is that correct? That's right. And you had non-support cases. Correct? Yes, I did. I got my That's right. That's paid off. Taking care of. You're stuck with the answer you get, Ms. Duval. 
uh, I can stop her from speaking and not being not responsive. Um, make your objection. I will make it to the court. Now, I have a little confusion. Maybe you can help me with this. So on May 19th of 2018, you were arrested for forgery, correct? Right. And on May 20th, you were arrested, uh, or you were you found with the drugs, correct? Right. And you were placed in lockdown. Yes. And then you made this statement on May 6th, correct? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, June 5th. God, I'm really losing my mind. June 5th. Yeah. Okay. So, if my calculation is correct, that's 17 days between those two things, correct? I guess, yeah. Okay. And you were in lockdown. I was not in lockdown the entire time. Thank you. That's all I have for you. Ms. Hilton, after you gave this written statement to law enforcement, did you continue to talk to the defendant? Uh, no. We were not speaking of it. Why did you stop speaking with the defendant? I stopped speaking to her. The last time I spoke to her is when she took me into her cell and she was showing me pictures of her and her her husband and kid, a, a different kid. And that's when the last time we had finished our conversation and what she had done. I never spoke to her again. Did she tell you why she did this to her daughter? Uh, well, she always, she just said she wasn't ever cut out to be a mother. She was kind of wrapped up in her own world and had her own thing going on. She said she just wasn't cut out to be a mom. Right. Did, did the defendant ever talk about an adoptive mother? Yeah, she said that her kids stayed at an adopted place uh, out of state. Okay. And what kids were she, was she, did you know what kids Two girls is all I know. Okay. Did uh, the defendant talk to you about her daughter at all? Uh, not the not the other one that lives that's still alive. Not she didn't say much about her. Uh, what did she say about her deceased daughter? Uh, she told me that she had a disability, and that uh, she said that she had problems with her at home sometimes and stuff. But. Okay. Thank you. At this time, you're off. Oh, one thing, Judge. <laughs> almost, almost forgot these, Judge. At this time, Judge, the state would move to admit states exhibits 20 into tw and 21 into evidence. Those are the jail affidavit. Those are not the ones I'm sorry, can I see the, did you? I, I gave them the, they're the yeah. affidavits from the county jails. After that they were there? That they were there. Okay, yeah, okay, no, I didn't this. And at this time, Judge, the state would rest. Okay, now we're going to take a break in a minute. Uh, I think that, I don't know if you're going to follow much or not, but I want to talk to Mr. Uh, Rude a second. Um, for, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna advise you of this, then we're gonna take a break. Um, you know, you have the right to testify or not to testify in this trial, it's up, uh, if you want to, you understand that? That's yes, right. And um, if you want to testify, nobody can stop you, you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. If you don't want to testify, nobody can force you to testify, you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And if you don't testify, I can't use that as any evidence of guilt or innocence either way, just that you didn't testify, you understand? Correct. But in the end, it's your decision and yours alone whether you testify or not, you understand that? I understand. 
You may talk to your attorney, they may give you advice, but in the end, it is your decision and yours alone. You understand that? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about this right? No, Your Honor. Okay. Now, do you guys have a motion? Are you, are you ready for recess? And I'll let you talk with uh, your client. I don't know what you're going to do. I, I just wanted to tell her that and take a break and see if she had any questions about it. Yeah, we can take a break here on that. We good. Okay, let's take about a 10-minute recess and we'll move from there. Okay.
So we're ready to go back on the record? I think so. Okay. So we're back on the record. The state has rested. And the defense? Your Honor, we do have a motion on the approach. Mm -hmm. At this point, we just probably stand on the motion and just say that the state has failed to prove the elements of the crimes alleged in the information. Okay. State, uh, no argument? Uh, no argument, Judge. I think we've made our, a submissible case. Right. Uh, the attorneys know. I'm, I'm understanding that maybe the live streaming world doesn't really know the law, but it, you know, but it doesn't take a lot to get past a motion for judgment or acquittal. It's not a finding of guilt, innocent, or anything else, but I think there is enough to get past the motion for judgment of acquittal, so I will overrule it. Okay. So, any witnesses from the defense? I, I don't know if the state wants to, well, I don't know if the, uh, if the judge wants to take up the, what the, the, what the court had uh, discussed with Ms. Rude before. No, I, I assume that I talked to her We've taken a break. She's talked to you. I'll leave it up. Uh, you know, I uh, assume that if you do something that she didn't want to do, she will tell me. But I, I'm leave I just wanted to make sure she understood, even though I know you've gone over a lot with her probably about her testifying or not. I just wanted to make a record that she had not been advised of that in court and leave it up to the attorneys to tell me what they want to do. And, and, Your Honor, I will tell the court that um, Ms. Rude has uh, opted to not just take the stand today. Okay. Thank you. And we do have a witness. Um, yes. Amy Macbeth. <laughs> Amy? Amy Macbeth. A-I-M-E. It is, and I will say for the court, uh, it is A-I-M-E-E, -E, and then Macbeth is M-C-B-E-T-H. What do you do at the Taney County Jail? I am a sergeant. Um, I'm a correctional officer. Okay. Can you tell us some of the job duties that you have at the jail? Um, just 
watching the inmates and feeding them and making sure they have the basic needs they need. Okay. And is this the same type of things you were doing in um, May in May of 2018? Yes. Okay. And you, you've dealt with, I, I assume, you had dealt with a lot of inmates, is that correct? Yes, I have. Okay. On May, t I'm going to re redirect your attention to May 20th of 2018. Okay. Where, uh, you were employed at Taney County, is that correct? Yes, I was. And were you working that day? Yes, I uh, was. <laughs> okay. Um, do you recall an incident with a an inmate named Kathy Hilton? Only from the report that I heard. Okay. So you don't have an independent recollection of it? No, I do not. But you did make a report of that incident? Yes, I did. Okay. And can you tell me what that incident was? Uh, it was passed on to me that she had... Objection, Your Honor. Uh, you're saying... You can't say what anybody else said. So what, if anything, did you do with regard to the information you received? What, what did I do with it? No. What did you do with the information that you received? Gave about it to my corporal. Okay. And do you know uh, what, if anything, um, happened in, uh, in relation to that? A search was done. Okay. <laughs> Did you perform that search? No, I didn't. Okay. Do you know if anything was a result of that search? Um, some Xanax was found. Okay. And with regard to Kathy Hilton, do you know if, um, are you aware if she was punished in any way for that? Uh, report says she was on lockdown. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Did you write the report? Yes, I did. Okay. As part of your jobs, do you uh, do you deal with um, or address conduct violations? Yes, I do. With with regard to the inmates. Yes. Okay. So it's standard that you do that. Yes. Did you address this? And did you address this particular conduct? That I cannot recall. Okay. But you did a report on this too, that you recall. That report, yes. Okay. May I approach the witness here? Do you recognize the document that I've placed in front of you? Yes. And what is that? That would be the report on that incident. And that's from the Taney County Sheriff's Office? Yes. And that's a jail incident report? Yes. <clears throat> and who does it indicate this report was made by? Uh, Amy McBeth. All right. And what was the incident date of this report? 5-20-2018. All right. And in this report, is it indicated uh, what happened to Ms. Hilton as a result of this violation. And May Hilton is on lockdown. I'm sorry, I don't know if I actually told the court which it, I'm sorry. Uh, Defendant's Exhibit S. Did you, you gave it to me earlier, but. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes. And it was for identification purposes. Um, now, you said you don't have an independent recollection of this particular event, correct? No, I do not. Okay. Um, as a corrections officer that's been at Taney County for a substantial period of time now, could you say what a, what a uh, general, generally what kind of punishment would someone begin for this type of conduct? That rule violation goes for the 20 day lockdown. All right. Now I have one other question for you because um, I think the state's going to ask you about it, but I'm going to ask you. Have you had any uh, write ups for your I own? I had a verbal counseling in May of this year for not releasing money in December. Okay. I have nothing further. Mr. Carell. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. McBeth, you have no independent recollection of this incident, correct? No, sir, I do not. And 
So you can't say if you place Hilton in lockdown or someone else placed Hilton in lockdown, correct? I can't say that I personally placed her in lockdown, but... You just notated it in your report that yes. Hilton is in lockdown. Your report doesn't notate that she's placed in lockdown for a certain number of days, correct? That is correct. Um, and you don't work 24-7, 365 days a week, year, correct? <laughs> well, you, no, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> you go home sometimes, right? I do. Okay. And... So you 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 didn't have an independent uh, observation of of Miss Hilton at all times while she was in lockdown, correct? And um, how are how are inmates typically locked down in in Taney County Jail, men and women? If it's anything over ten days for a male, we have a lockdown pod. For females, we do not have a lockdown pod. They are locked down in their cells in the pod. And you and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Do the women sometimes, uh, are they, they're sometimes locked down with other women, correct? Usually it's somebody else on lockdown. We don't typically put somebody into lockdown with someone that's not on lockdown. Right. So multiple people can be in lockdown at the same time. Multiple women can be in lockdown at the same time. Yes. And we'd like to think that all the policies of the Taney County Jail are always followed 24-7, all the time. Is that the case? No. No further questions. <laughs> I have some follow-ups. Um, so the state asked you about uh, lockdown, and, and you advise that sometimes they're locked down with other people who are locked down. Yes. Okay. The, for those women who are locked down, are they able to roam around the pod? Not during the daytime, no. Okay. Are they allowed to be out in the pod when other inmates are in the pod? No. And um, to the best of your ability, or to the best of your recollection, um, no, abstract that. I have nothing further here. Mr. I have nothing further for this witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. They don't know the inside of your jail. I do know the inside of Green County Jail. What it looks like. Does your jail have, it, when you put them in their cells, is it a solid door with, with a flip down tray uh, door or is it bars? No, it is a solid door. Um, we have one cell with the flip down with the chuckle. Um, the rest of them are just solid doors. So somebody out in the pod wouldn't be able to talk to somebody in the jail cell. Yeah, they can talk before. Okay. Can they um, can they go into another person's jail cell? They're not supposed to, no. If they're on lockdown? No. Okay. I mean, they're not supposed to even if they're not on lockdown. So. Oh, okay, thank you. And you said you said they're not supposed to go in their cells, but exactly. that means they can go in their cells if you don't if they will get caught. Yeah, we try not to. We try to keep an eye on that, but you know. And there's no there's no soundproofing between these door between the door and the pod, correct? You that can, is correct. So you can have a full fledged conversation between the door and the pod, correct? And you said they're not moving around during the daytime, but and they're not allowed, they're not out of their cell. If I'm correct, if I understand you correctly, they're not out of their cells during the daytime when they're on lockdown? Or night, except for an hour out after everyone's locked down. Okay, so they do get out of their cells during yes. lockdown? after lockdown, when everybody else is locked down, they get an hour out to shower and make phone calls and all right. Thank you. But when you're talking about walking into somebody else's cell, that's for people who are up in non-lockdown. Their doors are open, but they're not supposed to get in be in somebody else's cell at the time. And they made on lockdown store, they are locked behind their doors, so no one would be able to get into their cell. But you mentioned that they could walk, not to lockdown people, but in general, they're not supposed to walk into any other person's cell. No, that is, that is a, a rule of okay. I have nothing further. Nothing further for this witness. Thank you. You're pretty Thank good. You.
Excuse and, Your Honor, we did have, um, I discussed with the state, a stipulation on a witness that we uh, would have called that is Boyd Garrison. And specifically, um, I believe that the state, you know, obviously the defense would stipulate that um, Boyd Garrison responded to the Rood residence on July 18th of 2017 to the fire and Boyd Garrison's testimony would include that he was the first person to arrive at the property at the first gate and he would also testify that it was his belief that whenever he first made contact with Ms. Rood in the truck at the gate that he saw she had a passenger. And while he could not say with 100% certainty that that was Savannah, that that is who he believes was in the truck. He assumed was in the truck. That's what she said. Right. No, she said believe. Oh. Yeah. He, he, he assumed that that was Savannah in the truck. That would be the, I would agree to stipulate like to that. Well, let's let narrow it down a little bit. Is, is he saying there was two females in the vehicle, one of them being the defendant and one in some other vehicle, a vehicle a female that he was not sure who it was, or that this, there was just another person? I, I, I think that's fair, Judge, that, that he assumed it was a phantom, but in later statements he said he couldn't tell whether it was female or male. He could not testify to that, but he assumed that it was a phantom. There was another person. And I can find, actually, he was deposed. Um, I can allow the state to review this, or I can. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. It, it's in, in deposition. Uh, I'm pulling from memory, so the deposition is more accurate than my than my memory. Okay. And the question in the deposition was: Was there anyone else in the vehicle with her? And Mr. Garrison's response was: I think there was. I'm about 99% sure there was, but I couldn't swear to it. But I'm just almost positive there was somebody else with her. I thought it was Savannah. That's okay. I'll respond. I agree to stipulate to that exact statement. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, anything else from the defense? No, Your Honor. I'm still rebuttal the rest. State. Judge, uh, we may have rebuttal. I'm waiting on some information. Okay, well, let's go. Uh, but I think there's some stuff we should probably talk about, too. Okay. Know, chambers. Okay.
Judge, in rebuttal, we have a stipulation. Okay. The court's ready. Okay. The state and the defense would agree that Keith Gwynn, G W I N, is the jail administrator at the Taney County Jail. Mr. Gwynn would testify that there's no record of how long Kathy Hilton was on lockdown and that first time offenders could be on lockdown less than 20 days. Okay. I'll take that stipulation. Thank you, Your Honor. And that would be the state's rebuttal. And the state now rests? Yes. Okay. Any other motions? Yes, Your Honor. We have the motions, but we'll have to put a signature on them as well. I apologize. So it's an all-day KPO? Yes. Here's your list of witnesses that they're calling. Well, we have asked a few things here for tomorrow. We thought it was half-day KPO and half-day bench trial. Which, I mean, usually looking at it, they say it's going to take all day. So I'm thinking they have eight witnesses they're going to do in a half a day of a TPO. Yeah. It doesn't usually happen. At, and then she's, but no, Brittany says it's all day. This is all day. I didn't write it. <laughs> and, and so um, going to the closing part, would uh, like uh, 1230 tomorrow. Uh, see, they, they have witnesses scheduled like um, some uh, doctors at 839. Can we do closings, or do you want to do them today? I mean, you were talking about we we were there was some discussion about you know the reasons we outlined in the room, Judge, that we may want to do them tomorrow. But Mr. Garibrand, like I said, has would have to drive from Rolla. He has to go back to Rolla because he doesn't have a hotel anymore. Uh, I, and I do need some time to organize my closing, and I'm sure they do too. So if we did them today, I would request at least an hour to go do that. And, and our closings would be about 30 to 45 minutes. I, 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 I appreciate the consideration, but if you're going to do them at 1230 tomorrow, that's, that's no hardship on me. So that, I'm just trying to, I was trying to figure out how to get, because of the issues that were raised in the room about doing it tomorrow, that right. I'm just telling you I would do the DPR and the break about noonish or whatever and do the closings and tell them to push their people back um, until 2. Right. Uh, she gives about enough time, that's an hour and a half, to get done with closing. Or we can do it this afternoon later. I, I, and I don't know about our uh, victim's family either, Judge. And, and, I, I, I just checked in. Okay. Okay, we come back. Let's see. I'm pretty flexible. I was just trying to accommodate you. Know. Okay. I'm approaching with a motion for judgment of equivalent at the close of all evidence. And do you want to argue it? Um, Your Honor, I would just simply, I think, stand on the motion and make the same assertion as I did at the close of state's evidence. And we would make the same assertion, Judge. We've made a submissible case. Okay, I'll overrule that. Uh, anything else today that we need to do? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Okay. Um, now, yeah, uh, off the record, uh, just dawned on me. I know Tom is gone these three days. Uh, I'll have to ask him, can we have his courtroom tomorrow from 1230 to, to 2? Well, Lauren asked me if it would be done by tomorrow afternoon, and I told her I thought we might, but I can see if they can reach out to her and see. Well, usually, well, just, I'll just go ask her. Okay.